everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. My name is Dr. Nicole Gucci. I am the host of Learning Space, and today, you just get me. Uh, my co-host, Georgia Bracey, is off in uh, D.C., I think, for a meeting, and then next week she's in Vancouver, so she is doing a bit of uh, planet hopping, uh, as it were. Um, I tried to get a guest for today on a topic I wanted to talk about, but they uh, are, are quite busy and didn't get weren't able to get back to me in time. So uh, what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about World Space Week, which is next week, and tell you how you can um, check out uh, events that may be happening near you. And I'd also like to talk a bit, uh, I've started to get some questions and phone calls about the, uh, the the lunar and solar eclipses that'll be visible from North America. So I'll give you guys some information on that. Also happy to take any questions you guys have. Uh, I see we have a hello from Nancy. Happy Learning Space Day. Uh, and a hello from Guido. Happy Learning Space in October. It's already October. Oh my gosh. Um, so welcome everybody watching. Um, and if you are uh, here because you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, sorry, not sorry for the last video. If uh, humorous things are not your thing, that's fine. Uh, a couple more, and I'm probably not going to uh, have them show up in the feed so uh, quickly as they did. Um, but if you do subscribe to my YouTube channel and you saw that, that was for a fundraiser. So it was for a good cause. I hope you enjoyed the humorous video as well. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys a bit about World Space Week at worldspaceweek.org. I've, uh, enab I've enabled the Q&A app so that you guys can ask any questions, leave any comments, say hello. Um, and I've also enabled the Showcase app. So if you go to that, there'll be links to both World Space Week, which I'll be talking about briefly first, and then the eclipses coming up in October. So World Space week was declared by the United Nations in 1999 as a large public celebration of space flight. And that's because of a couple of important um, anniversaries that happen next week. So World Space Week officially starts October 4th. October 4th will be this Saturday uh, and goes on through October 10th. And October 4th is the... Um, the anniversary of the launch of Sputnik. So Sputnik being the first human-made satellite from Earth to space, going beep, 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 all the way around uh, in 1957. And then in uh, October 10th of 1967, took 10 years later, was the signing of the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States in the Exploration and Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, including the Moon and other celestial bodies. Longest title ever, but hey, it's a treaty, so I guess they have to uh, make sure they include everything. Uh, basically saying that um, <clears throat> no one nation could go and... Uh, necessarily claim the land uh, in outer space or use it uh, for something other than peaceful uses. So it was a treaty uh, for all of humanity to explore, um, to explore space together. Uh, so they've been doing a bunch of events all over the world. Uh, I can pull up a map um, with the screen share. Uh, so this is at worldspaceweek.org if you're listening. We'll have that in the show notes as well. So there are, uh, there's of course a, a worldwide map of activities happening. There are over 500 events logged, about 288 of them uh, show up on this map because they had a location. So uh, all over the East. North America, South America, a few in Africa, all over Europe, uh, and, and a bit in Asia as well, uh, the Middle East. So lots of space happenings um, in different uh, countries around the EU and in several states of the U.S. So if you can find one near you, that's great. We're out here in Illinois. Unfortunately, there's not one here. Um, so we may just have our, we have our own space celebrations every day anyway. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. So that's a little bit about World Space Week. Um, so you can check out uh, something near you. There's lots of different sponsors, including lots of organizations we know very well, Astronomers Without Borders, uh, Yuri's Night, Unawe, um, Lockheed Martin, lots of great, um, lots of great people who are working uh, to sponsor and uh, keep this, uh, this celebration going. So do something for World Space Week. If you don't get to an event or you don't have an event near you, do something spacey, tweet some extra spacey things. Um, and let people know that you do appreciate humankind's exploration of outer space. Um, so that's World Space Week. And uh, during World Space Week, there will be a celestial event 
uh, the lunar eclipse will be visible. Um, there's a total lunar eclipse happening. It'll be visible. Let me pull this up from, uh, let's see, the West Coast. Uh, for most of the U.S., it will be completely visible for the West Coast of the U.S., um, Western Canada, Alaska, Eastern Siberia, Eastern, um, Eastern Australia. Um, but we'll get everybody uh, across North America and Asia and Australia and South America will get a good view. Unfortunately, you guys over in Europe um, are not going to be able to see this particular lunar eclipse. So a lunar eclipse... Uh, of course, occurs when the moon ducks behind the shadow of the Earth. Um, every once in a while, it lines up such that uh, the moon will actually go through Earth's shadow, so as shown here. Um, and so it's got the different times in, um, in uh, it's got different times of, of when it goes in and out of the shadow. Um, there is a chart, so if you go to eclipse.gsfc.nasa.gov, I will put that up in the notes as well. And that will um, tell you everything you need to know about observing eclipses, including dates and times for different locations. So uh, that's the lunar eclipse. Like I said, I've, I've started, I've gotten a couple of local calls about that. Um, it'll be, uh, for us, I think it'll be close to the moon setting, um, the, the eclipse time here. So it's not exactly a, a really good time to hold a public event. But if you get a chance to see it, uh, check it out. And I'm sure, I'm sure, um, you will be um, seeing uh, phot photography of the eclipse uh, from all over the world the next day. Universe Today is, of course, a really great site that often collects a lot of these um, best photography that happens around the world. We have uh, a, uh, ooh, here we go, a note from Guido. Uh, starting in about a week, um, the International Space Station will be seen in Europe uh, in the evenings. So uh, we, we've got six humans flying overhead. Um, uh, so that'll be next week. Check heavensabove.com, heavens-above.com. That is really great for uh, looking for the International Space Station. So you guys in Europe are going to get some really great evening passes. It's always nice to wave at the station and wave at the astronauts. You know, you know they can't see you, but it's nice to know uh, that you're thinking of them. And it's uh, really cool when you're standing outside and looking up at the sky and somebody wanders by and goes, what you looking at? And you go, wait wait there and then right there it appears because you're watching your timer and <laughs> they, they they're really surprised like what are you talking about like oh yeah that's the space station did you know that was going overhead there's six people on it um so that's pretty cool uh nancy graziano signs up signed up for iss flyover alerts by email so she gets email notifications whenever it's visible i have an app uh when we did a show about apps a while back um don't remember what mine's called, ISS Tracker, Pos ISS Detector. Um, I like to use that uh, on my phone to let me know when there's going to be a bright iridium flare or an ISS pass over, uh, particularly when I'm doing um, public events. So that's really nice because you've already got people outside looking up and get their attention for something like that. Uh, so even though you guys won't get the lunar eclipse that we're seeing here uh, on October 8th uh, in uh Western North America or North America, South America, and Asia, uh, you will get some nice ISS passes. Um, the, then there's a solar eclipse happening on October 23rd. Uh, again, the west coast of the U.S. and Canada will be best place to see this one. It's a partial solar eclipse, so that the uh, moon won't be completely blocking out the sun. It's not exactly lined up this time. Um, but the partial eclipse, I know that um, there are some people getting ready to view the eclipse in Seattle and Toronto. Um, trying to think of what other good places we'll, we'll be able to see it. Uh, yeah, Seattle and Toronto are a couple couple places I know of that are having events. Um, here where I am in St. Louis, kind of in of North America, uh, we'll be seeing it near sunset. So we'll get to see part of a solar eclipse. And you always, always, always... I don't know if I have a pair of them that handy. Oh, I do. You always, always, always want to use uh, safe sun protection when you're viewing the sun. So um, there are solar viewing glasses that you can buy. Astronomers Without Borders just put all of theirs on sale. Uh, so you can get them depending on how many you get for between a dollar and three dollars each. Um, so these are, I put this on, I can literally cannot see anything through them. 
Um, but if I look up in the sun, I'd see a little disc. Um, these were from the uh, Venus transit in, in 2012, which was just barely visible through these guys. So use so safe solar protection uh, or make a pinhole camera. So you could just put a pinhole in a piece of cardboard and make a shadow on the ground and see how the shadow changes as the sun goes through the eclipse. Um, or you can uh, use a uh, project the image from a telescope onto a piece of paper, a piece of cloth, something like that, and build a solar viewer. Is that um, that's another safe way, uh, as long as you don't mind the glue getting a little melty in your telescope. Um, that that has happened if you if you use a cheap telescope, that has happened to me. The glue gets melty when you point it at the sun for too long. Uh, so that is um, the solar eclipse on October twenty third. Um, the lunar eclipses uh, are part of a tetrad. Some people have been asking me about that. Um, there are, tetrad is a four consecutive total lunar eclipses. Uh, this is, I think, the th second or third of this tetrad. Uh, nothing particularly special about it that you'll be able to see, but it's just interesting to note that uh, there's a cluster of them happening. Um, so this is one of these tetrads or these clusters. Um, the comments really quickly um, need a camera on moon for these eclipses from Michael. Yes, cameras on moon are good. Uh, you can just take a, a regular uh, point and shoot digital camera and play with the settings for exposure time uh, to get good pictures of the moon as it goes through different uh, stages of the eclipse. That's what I did last time. Um, and Michael also is looking forward to number two of the astrologer video. Oh dear. <laughs> Number two is recorded. It will go up soon. Um, there will be a three and a four. Uh, I'm going to stick to my day job doing outreach, not so much with the humor, but again, I promised our our, um, our uh, donors for the do-it-yourself science zone at Geek Girl Con that I would do that. So uh, speaking of Seattle, uh, I'll be in Seattle the weekend of October 11th and 12th uh, for Geek Girl Con, the do-it-yourself science zone. So if you happen to be going to Geek Girl Con or in Seattle or thinking about attending, uh, there will be, during both days of the con, there will be a science zone staffed by several of us scientists. It's it's uh, it's me, it's Rachelle Burks, it's Dean Lee. Um, I think Matthew Francis is going to be there. A whole bunch of great people uh, doing science experiments um, with kids and adults. So it's it's for all ages. Uh, we encourage everyone to come and play. Uh, I'll probably be doing the Pocket Solar System along with the CosmoQuest uh, website. Um, and thankfully, that's it for travel. Uh, the November, oh, Tom Nathie says, the November issue of Sky and Telescope, which I do not subscribe to anymore, unfortunately. Um, but has a nice article on how planetary nebulae get their weird shapes. So, so check that out. That's a cool tidbit. Um, as far as the learning space schedule coming up, wanted to share that with you in particular because um, George and I have talked about doing a um, an open show. So uh, we appreciate uh, that some of you guys come back week after week and uh, ask great questions and bring great comments to the show. Uh, and so we'd like to invite some of you guys, since we can fit up to 10 people in here, <laughs> we'd like to invite some of you guys who are here every week um, to come on the show and share some of your favorite astronomy resources, um, educational resources in particular, or uh, your own experiences. Um, doing astronomy either with CosmoQuest or in your backyard or wherever you do astronomy. Um, I'll be reaching out to some of you guys, but if you're interested, you can email us at uh, educate at CosmoQuest.org if you want to be a part of that show. Like I said, tentatively for the 22nd. We're oh, okay, unfroze.
the birthday solar colors to astronomy. So, um, unfortunately, um, um, okay, it's I'm going to have up for everything. I think our main issue here at SIUE, and I apologize. I'm going to end this, and uh, thank you guys for coming out, and I uh, will see you guys next week. Uh, again, I'll be Sands, Georgia, but next week we'll be talking about the uh, teacher training workshops down in Austin, Texas, at and with the McDonald Observatory. So thank you guys for coming.